Well, hello loves, and welcome back to Musies Modern Dreadfuls. And before I get into part three of tonight's finale of Morphine Revelations by Bunny B03, I want to make sure that you all have checked out Dr. Creepin's three part series. It was the club I was talking about for the longest time. He turned it into a three Sunday series event and they are all up right now. So be sure to check those out and away we go. There wasn't really much the police could do with no evidence and even less proof. Our aunt's story continued on the radio. Everything changed when Rona took an unexpected sick day from work. The schedule hadn't changed since you moved in. Rona had always had weekends off and worked weekdays from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., even the holidays. Nobody was supposed to be there. Well, due to her being sick, she still took you kids to daycare. You were both dropped off like normal, so she could go back home and rest. Sleep it off, kinda. Keith, you're like that too when you're sick. You turn into a giant koala. You'd sleep 16 hours straight if I let ya. Jesus. I keep getting off track. There's just so much I want to say. So much I haven't said. Well, I haven't been able to. Until now. When your mother arrived home, she walked in on the person in the kitchen. He was eating fruit you guys had bought at the market the day before. A pomegranate. No one can say what happened for sure in that kitchen. But I can tell you what it looked like from what the officers had found. <coughs> the track interrupted as she broke into a fit of hacking coughs. She was attacked with the kitchen knife he was using to cut the fruit in half. Her body was mutilated so savagely that at first I was convinced it was your dad. Even after all of his alibis and his current location. Who else could have done something that brutal to someone. Rhoda had no enemies. The truth of the matter was much worse than I imagined. Investigators caught the man a few miles away shortly after the crime. He confessed to everything. I guess thinking maybe it would lead to some kind of absolution. Well, it didn't. Not to me. I could kill him ten dozen times every day, and I'd still go to bed at night without a sister. The man they caught was a transient by the name of Terence Hayes. He'd been convicted for small crimes here and there throughout his entire life. Rona had stopped for gas one night real late on her way home after covering for someone who had called out sick. Hayes had climbed in the back of Rona's car and covered himself up with clothes so he could hide. You know how messy your mom always kept her car, Abby. If you remember, that is. They made it all the way home, and she never even knew he was back there. He waited until everyone went to sleep that night. 
crawled out of the car and entered the house. Your house had a crawl space just underneath the back room for storage and whatnot. Ronan never went down there. She didn't have anything good to store and didn't like small spaces. The most horrifying thing about it all was what the investigators found in that crawl space. Hayes had pictures, dozens of them. They were all over the walls and the ceiling, mainly of Keith. He had gotten himself a blanket and a pillow out of the trash when she threw it away with your old ones. There were scattered food wrappers and empty water bottles everywhere also. After I fought your father and gained guardianship of you both, police officers told me that there was evidence to suggest he had been living under there for more than four months, right under Rona's nose. You all were living with a murderer the whole time and didn't even know. <laughs> he ended up getting 35 years to life due to mental illness technicality. <laughs> that stuff was all new back then. Unprecedented. Now, now I hope you can understand why I didn't tell you. Even at the ages you are now, all grown up, it's still something I don't think you would ever feel better about knowing. It's been tough on me throughout the years to keep things from you. I love you both so very much. Please. <laughs> Please forgive me. And know that we love you. And that I finally get to see my sister. The recording stops just as the phone rings. Aunt Melody had just passed away in her sleep. My effort to suppress my tears now fail me. My heart aches for my mother, for us, and most of all, for Aunt Mel. Our whole lives, we thought she was keeping information from us to be selfish. I actually accused her of destroying pictures herself as an angsty teen. My high school project required a photographic family tree, and I didn't have any adult pictures of her for it. When I asked Aunt Mel about it. She couldn't help, and I flipped out on her. I looked over to my brother. His face was as white as a sheet. Keith's massive hands trembled. He chewed on his lower lip, something he used to do as a child when he was scared. Abby? He turned to me, tears in his eyes. I'm freaking out. I need help. What are you talking about? I ask him. I'm just as freaked out as you are here. She was my mom too. Come on, give me hugs. No, you don't understand, he yelled, eyes wild with fear. A guide just moved in next door to me. 
He was an older guy, maybe like 65 or 70. He introduced himself to me when he first moved in. He said his name was Terry Hayes. And with that, we have the finale of Morphine Revelations. And yes, so Terry Hayes sounds a lot like Terrence Hayes, doesn't it? Of course, you've made that connection by now. But I just like the oh shit moment of the story. And again, this was written by Bunny B03. And bing, bang, boom, I'm sure you've heard the outro sound. So definitely check out Dr. Creepin's Community Storyteller Days. They have been three in all, and they have all been on Sunday. I'm recording this on the final Sunday, and... Happy Father's Day, by the way, to any fathers out there. And on that note, yippee ki music lovers. Have a great Father's Day, great weekend. Stay healthy, stay safe. We all need to get together and get through this life together. So hang in there. And if you want to talk, hit me up. All right, friends, I will talk to you soon. Bye now.